right? We all have a choice as traders. Uh, wake up in the morning and jump on anything that moves or be very, very patient. Think about your longevity. Think about the long game. Think about where you want to be or even if you want to be doing this in the next five to 10 years. And your answer should always be simple. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of uh, nightly update. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's talk about the market. A couple of good things that uh, bulls did okay today. I think that's the best way of saying it. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it was just okay. Um, you know, we've been trading kind of in this tight channel now for the last you know three or four days really really big good uh constructive uh, move up digestion and that's kind of where we are we're in this kind of holding pattern and what i like what the bulls did today was uh you know we went we started going lower and again remember the word lower doesn't mean we're going down it just means sometimes you need a back test so i like the fact that we uh we, we came in a little bit today uh, we touched the 10-day moving average, held it perfectly, and reclaimed it, right? That was good. Um, I like the fact that uh, IBM, and again, we usually don't talk about IBM, this is, this is the reason why. Um, it feels like IBM, you know, topped their quarter today, um, and it feels like they haven't topped their quarter since like 1826, okay? This is, I don't remember the last time, uh, matter of fact, if you look at the charts, you'll see. Uh, here's a quarter that got it lower, right? Here's another quarter that got it lower. Here's another quarter, right? I'm guessing somewhere here. Here's another quarter, got it lower. So it, it's good, right? The, the NASDAQ held, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial should be held uh, should be helped by IBM because they beat their quarter and there's a pretty good way uh, on the market. But you know, there, there's a lot of things that kind of, if you look at the market today, it, it's very stale. It continues to be very stale. Um, you know, we're kind of in this Holding pattern, and maybe uh, maybe Netflix uh, that comes out with earnings tomorrow uh, will finally get this market moving in one direction or another. At least right now, we know that the bulls have held serve. Right? We also know uh, that the sellers are very comfortable at these levels. That if they weren't comfortable at these levels, then we'd be all the way back down to start filling this gap that we reclaimed the 50-day moving average. So there's, there's definitely a lot of positives uh, that if you are a longer-term bull that you, you have to feel very, very good. If you're an intraday trader, then all of us you know, know the worst kept secret in the last you know, several days. The action has been very, very stale, okay? And this is just the reality. If you look at any one of your favorite uh, technology names, and granted, they had this marvelous run and nobody is taking away from anything they've done for the last you know, two weeks or so. But if again, if you go one by one and see uh, where the money flow is right now, it's kind of on the sidelines, right? Amazon had this monster pivot today. We'll get there in a second. Had this outrageous pivot today, and we discussed this kind of on the on the weekend update, and did absolutely a 360, complete full circle at the end of the day. Uh, Google had this really, really, you know, pretty good move here right out the word go, right? Had this nice seven, eight dollar pop, and kind of came back in. Um, you know, Tesla. Did some good things today, right? Tesla, you know, came in, successfully tested the 705 level. I'll show you kind of a, a plan we had in the morning. Uh, held uh, the 705 50-day moving average and, you know, closed above it. Now, the question with Tesla is should have, should have even got down to this level in the first place. Again, there's a whole big uh, news this morning talk about uh, people, you know, something about the driverless car. It crashed and blah, blah, blah. There's an investigation. Who the hell knows? But the point is... If you look at the dynamics of everything that's going on in the market, you really have to be very, very creative in finding some good value. And, and honestly, I don't think that's our job. We actually, uh, we talked about this in, in pretty decent length uh, on the weekend update. Um, and if you are, you know, if you are one of these adrenaline junkies and you decide to, again, close your eyes to the fact and say, look, look, I don't care that the market's open. I know there's action. I need the action. I need the juice. Well, you're, you, you kind of know what you did today. And let's be honest, unless you were in a stock like a FUTU uh, that had a really, really aggressive day, uh, it's very, very tough to turn around and say, well, here's where the aggression was. Here's where the value was. I'm very, very happy about this. 
And this is where I think is going to happen tomorrow. And if you go through a lot of charts, and again, I, I, I really I go through a lot of charts every single night and I'm pretty uh, thorough. Uh, again, you do have to uh, be a little bit more creative. And I, and I do think uh, tomorrow, for example, uh, Netflix comes out with earnings. This is the first uh, release from the beta space or the technology space. Um, you know, I do believe they'll kind of set the tone. If you remember last quarter, Netflix was the first one to really set that really great tone, right? I mean, really, really great tone. They had a fantastic quarter. You had growth in all different parts of the world and yada, yada, yada. The stock has not done anything, right? Like absolutely anything uh, since the last earnings release. You know, is it possible to give us a trade for tomorrow running into earnings? Yeah, why not, right? I mean, if you look at the 60-minute channel here, you can see it's rejected here several times. You know, maybe it does give us give us a trade uh, into uh, into a run up into earnings. Because again, if you look at the macro channel, right, it starts accumulating these levels. Maybe we can get a push into the five seventies. Again, we'll see, right? We'll see. There's really not a lot you could turn around tonight and say, well, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Uh, financials still continue to be good, right? If you look at Goldman Sachs uh, reported last week uh, went sideways. You know, listen, maybe if Goldman Sachs starts getting above. Uh, you know, starts getting above the 414 highs. Can this thing spike up as well? Yeah, I, I guess, right? I, I guess. So this is kind of where we are right now. We are in the world of slim pickings. Uh, and if you are one of these uh, kind of like social media junkies that, you know, relies on social media for your fantastic ideas or jump on everything that's going to move, then you're going to find yourself like a Ginsu knife. You're going to chop yourself up and you're going to realize after the close every single day that maybe the value that you thought subconsciously in your mind was actually not there. So we have some work to do. Definitely have some work to do. But that's kind of the whole point of we talking about, you know, waiting for your pitch, playing the premium hand. You don't need to trade every single day. Like today, like here's here's my day today, right? I, I took a couple of balances today on Tesla. One was successful. One was not, right? Then I scalped a couple of bucks on GameStop and almost – took out macro, blah, 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 but it didn't. And that was kind of the end of the day. And, and if you look at today's action and you really dive into it, unless you are trading the Bangladesh Stock Exchange or some uh, some cryptic world that the Dole coin or the parakeet coin or the fish coin uh, lays on, then you kind of had probably the same experience. It, but that's okay as well. And, and, and again, we always talk about the long term, right? And having a long term, playing the long game instead of having a short term view, being an adrenaline junkie and trying to catch something today. Again, it's cool catching a trade today, but it's much more important to be mentally and fundamentally prepared for tomorrow. And it's much more important because you know you'll get your value day. Is that value day going to come tomorrow? To be determined, right? We don't know by that. But the good news is it lo as long as you are not, and I've used this term a lot, as long as you are not prostituting your money, I think you're going to be fine. If you're sitting there, you know, throwing caution to the wind and start putting everything on deck because some guy on social media is saying it's going to go higher, it's going to go lower, then you know it. You don't have to even raise your hand. You know it when you're sleeping at night and you're about to put your head on the pillow. You know what you did today. And, and everybody is looking at the market the same way. So if you're looking at a stock like Apple, you know it did nothing today. It held pretty much pretty good relative strength. And it does look very, very good. Like it's about to come out of a channel and maybe they do run it up ahead of earnings. But you, you kind of know, right? It kind of know you, it really didn't do anything. Uh, a name like Square has been strong. It's been tied into Bitcoin and Bitcoin has been kind of uh, moving down in the last uh, several sessions or so. It hasn't really done anything as well. So you're having a lot of names, uh, even a name like Microsoft had a really, really great run in the last four or five days hasn't done anything as well. So we have a choice, right? We all have a choice as traders, uh, wake up in the morning and jump on anything that moves or be very, very patient. Think about your longevity. Think about the long game. Think about where you want to be, or even if you want to be doing this in the next five to 10 years. And your answer should always be simple. You like to trade, but you don't have to trade. You want to trade, but you don't need to trade. And that's kind of the psychology going into every single trading day. If you, you are getting that hand and you're getting that hand, uh, the, the queens, the jacks, the kings of the aces, you know what's, what's possible, right? So there's a macro channel, for example, at any point coming up on Tesla, whether it's the long or the short side, I know I'm going to be both hands in, right? Whether the long side, right, there's a sneaky channel here. And at least today we put in a definitive bottom, 
Okay, well, excuse me, a definitive trading bottom that if it confirms in the next few days, you can see where your measure potential is. Even a name like NVIDIA that had a really, really big run, you can see it, right? It got tapped out. It got tired. It had some news today that their deal, their arm deal uh, might be up, up in the air. It sold off a little bit. When I say a little bit, I'm obviously tongue and cheek, gave back $22. But at least here, it's giving you a double bottom here. And you say, well, look. If the third time is a charge that they start confirming this channel, can this stock go lower as well and give you another 11, 12 points in a 10-day moving average? Absolutely. So again, it's we're on a holding pattern. We're in a wait and see situation. It, the market's not a long, the market's not a short, it's kind of there digesting information. And you can just see that by the NASDAQ 100. You can see how tight this channel is. Today we held the 10-day moving average. That's a good thing, right? That's an absolutely good thing. The only difference, the only problem is we got rejected off the five. And you can see how tight this channel is. So something has, has to give. We're either going to lose the bottom of the channel here, which we obviously know the area of, of reference. This 335 level is going to be super huge uh, if the market decides to pull back. And if the market decides to rally, well, we need some sort of catalyst. Maybe the earnings season uh, will finally give us a, a next push higher, and hopefully Netflix will start, um, you know, giving us that push uh, for tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. So again, when you look at the pivots today, uh, you could see we had a, a pretty aggressive game plan today uh, on Tesla. And you know, this sometimes you, you're just putting in a very, very clean pivot that say, hey, if it takes out this level, it should go higher. If it takes out that level, it should go lower. Today, I decided to kind of give a multi-layered uh, game plan on Tesla. And obviously, the big number for today's channel was that 750 level. Obviously, never got there. Uh, and here's where the, 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 there was a two-sided trade in this thing. Again, uh, some of you guys I know took the 720 breakdown to the short side. I know some of you guys took the 705, 707 level back to the upside. So it, 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 it was something was there for everybody, but this wasn't one of those clean trades that every single trader took part in. So uh, Tesla, again, this obviously never happened. 720, congratulations for you guys who did took that, took that trade uh, into 720. Uh, it went all the way down to actually the 705 level and you'll you'll see in a second. I actually put it. I actually put a different price up here. But I actually did not take the short side. I took the upside uh, to that 705 channel. And, and again, they did reclaim that 705 channel uh, on the close, close somewhere around the 714 level. But it wasn't without a really really big fight uh, for the Tesla bulls. But at least you have a por point of reference now, both, both to the downside and both to the upside of what potentially uh, happens next. Uh, eBay. Uh, just died out at 65, did nothing. Uh, Gilead did absolutely nothing. You can tell this is this is where we kind of were. Uh, NVAX had a late day surge towards the end of the day. It traded up to like a little bit less than 220. Never, never, you know, never confirmed that we came close. Uh, GameStop, we actually took off the opening range high of 72. Um, the funny thing is, I actually made some sales around 75. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, in the 74s. Uh, it stopped at 75. Uh, it was basically the high of the previous channel. It just kind of died on a vine. MITK, I wasn't watching. Where was MITK? Um, was watch. I still like this MITK. Guys, watch this MITK uh, for tomorrow as well. It kind of held up here. I'm actually going to put this on our watch list so we don't forget. But keep an eye on this MITK. I still like this thing. If this thing starts reclaiming this top of the channel here, it could go higher. But obviously, you can see no, no, nothing really... Uh, not too many things, um, you know, this was huge. Congratulations for all you guys who, who took Amazon. Uh, Amazon and Google were really, really big. Uh, Amazon 3408, 3410 needs to build. Again, here's the problem with Amazon, though. If you miss that first move, right, and here's the first move, right, it took out that 3408, 3410 level, it put up a $30 candy. There was nothing wrong with it. But if you didn't catch that move, look at the, look at the 360, right? Look, excuse me, look at the 180. <laughs> that Amazon did. It, it ran up like 30 points and then it died like 30 points. So, you know, crazy action there. Uh, Google, uh, Am Netflix did nothing, never gave us a second entry. Uh, Google, 229, 2, 2,297, 2,300. Put up about a $7 candle, did exactly the same thing as Amazon. Uh, take on the way up, take on the way up. Uh, again, yeah, so this is where I kind of switched, uh, I switched the... Uh, I switched the um, the bounce. It was actually 705. That's where I I got along my first bounce. Um, yeah, that's that. So uh, Dvax never confirmed for a second entry. 
Uh, yeah, and I said, listen, take some sales on the way up. Use break even now uh, as your stop free runner. So again, it, it, this wasn't a premium day, okay? Nor do I expect uh, tomorrow to be a premium day. But, but again, if you are a professional trader or you're an aspiring professional trader, as much as you want those $25, $30 candles, and, and again, going back to two weeks ago, who didn't love NVIDIA? Who didn't love Apple? Who didn't love uh, Amazon? Who didn't love Tesla? But now it's time to be an adult, right? And I've been saying this distribution, uh, rest, whatever you want to call it, usually takes place for three, four days. Tomorrow's day four, okay? And maybe something has to give. We're either going to uh, lose the bottom of the channel in the queues, and obviously then we'll start going sell biased. Or if the market starts building off, to the, off the previous day's lows, which were today on the queues, maybe we could finally start bursting above the linear regression line. We'll see. We'll see. The point is, let the market dictate to you what your next move is. Don't sit there and try to guess. Believe me, guessing is a very, very terrible and a very expensive habit. Guys, God bless. Have a great day. And I'll see you all tomorrow.